welcome back to this series on time stepping algorithms, specifically with neural network training. Uh, we were, we're learning flow maps. And this is going to be the final lecture on this. And really, the focus here is going to be on thinking about multi scale flow maps. What we want to do is what I've shown in the first two lectures is how to take time steps using a neural network, how to train it to map you from time t to t plus delta t. It's very much like what we do in numerical integration, where to map ourselves from t plus, t plus delta t is we use something like runga kutta steppers. But now, the neural network is free of the constraint imposed from a Taylor series expansion, which requires delta t to be small in order for that mapping to be accurate. Neural networks allow us flexibility in saying, if I can just learn with training data how to map from some delta across some delta t, where delta t is no longer having to be small, maybe I can buy myself flexibility in modeling frameworks because now I can take much larger steps to the future state. And this brings us to this topic of multi-scale flow maps, which is we're going to show here how we can do this using, uh, in fact, a very nice set of neural, neural network architectures which allow us to actually learn fast, slow, and intermediate scale physics simply by building these flow maps uh, in, in, in neural, using neural networks. So remember that the discrete time flow maps look something like this. It is a map taking me from time t of k to time t of k plus 1. So x represents the state of the system. And so I look at the state of the system at some time t, and delta t later, it's represented by here. Flow maps generically can take very large delta t's, right? This f object is some kind of, uh, normally from numerical integration, we might have a runga kutta that would prescribe this f. But here now, what we're going to do is we're going to take neural network architectures to learn a form of f so that it can make this mapping happen even if delta t is large. Or even better, if I have multi-scale physics, where I have slow scale physics, fast scale physics, how could I learn a multitude of flow maps in order to, in fact, have a much richer representation of the solution as I march forward in time? So here's the basic guitar architecture, input layer to output layer. The input layer of the neural network is the solution at time t. The output layer of the neural network is the solution at t plus delta t. So it's just our flow map. So this thing here is representing f, our flow map. It is taking me from the input to an output. And provided I have enough data, we can train this and build an accurate representation. In the last lecture, I explicitly showed how to do this with Lorenz 63. We built a neural network architecture which would be now a proxy for time stepping because, in fact, it's a very nice accurate representation taking me from t to t plus delta t. I built an f, and that f is some nonlinear representation, some neural network representation of what I would have done had I done something like uh, OD45, uh, in other words, fourth order Runga Kutta. So, this is the architecture we want to build, but now we want to modify it. We want to start thinking about this multi-scale stepping schemes. So what do we mean by that? Well, normally in a time course of events of measuring a system, you might have some fast scale physics and you might have some slow scale physics. So this is always a really uh, interesting dilemma when you do numerical computations because the fast scale physics essentially imposes a uh, very significant limitation on your ability to simulate systems long time, right? Because you have to resolve the fast scale physics very accurately in order for you to produce some kind of very long time behavior, okay? So we know that from uh, standard numerical computing. So now what we're going to do, because we have this architecture with learning flow maps with neural networks, what we're going to do is we're going to learn a flow map for very large steps into the future, okay? This would, of course, from scientific point of view, scientific, scientific computing would, would really have a difficult time for this because all the scientific computing tools are based upon Taylor series expansions, which a large step like this would uh, destroy their approximations. 
here, we're just simply going to say, how do I map myself from here to some point very far into the future to some point very far into the future there? So if I have some slow scale physics, I'm building a map to capture accurately that slow scale physics. And what I've done here is just shown uh, a representation of a system that has slow, fast, and medium scale physics. So the slow scale you would capture with some trained flow map here. The blue here is the intermediate scale, so medium scale physics, where I'd learn a flow map there. And then the orange here are representing the fast scale physics. So you could imagine the flow maps allow you to decompose this. The neural network architecture is very flexible. It simply allows you to say, let me learn a flow map for each of these scales. And then when I build my solution, I will combine them together to give you a prediction, which I can now do long time into the future. Because now to walk, walk a long time into the future, I would take very large steps to get out there and then refine the, 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 the uh, re fill in the dynamics using the medium and slow scale physics. I mean, sort of the medium and fast scale physics. This, by the way, is all in this paper here by uh, Yu Ying Lu. Uh, it's on the archive. And in fact, the code for this is on GitHub. So everything I'm going to talk about here, you can just download the GitHub code and you can run this and we show this for many different models and uh, it's, it's a nice architecture because it really allows you a great deal of flexibility <coughs> in modeling multi-scale physics phenomena. And it's all based upon learning flow maps which I already showed you how to do in the last lecture. So let's start off with how we're going to set this up. Just like the last lecture, everything revolves around the fact that I have a, uh, a large uh, curated training data set. Right? So this, all of this holds together provided I have sufficiently good data. <coughs> and this data here is a solution at different time steps, different trajectories. In other words, I have many trajectories that I can connect, concatenate together into my training set. And if you remember in the last lecture, when we did this for Loren 63, I had 100 trajectories with different initial data and with a time step between a point of one. So I could essentially use that as my training step to learn a flow map neural network stepper. And that's what we want to do here. Everything in neural networks hinges on having good data. So let's not, uh, you know, that's a really important point that we all understand. None of this works unless we have the data. And, but provided we have the data, we can do a lot with that data. OK, so here's the idea of the flow map training. I want to walk myself into the future, t plus delta tj. Remember, the delta tj, all that's indicating really is uh, I'm going to have three different scales here, fast, medium, and slow. So the delta tj for the fast scale is small, the delta t is small. But for the slow scale, the delta t is quite big. I'm just going to learn a big flow map. Like if I want to take a really big step in the future, I'm going to do that by using the delta t here to enforce that. So, and what we're going to say is the solution that's delta t in the future is what it is now plus the flow map itself. So you're going to say, I take my solution now, I walk it forward, and that's the flow map. And I give it, uh, and I want to learn this. This is, this is the entire uh, point of this, is to learn this flow map. The flow map itself is a neural network. So I have the input to the system, and here is the network. Neural networks are compositional structures, right? They are layers upon layers, and all this is representing for you is a compositional structure of that neural network architecture where what we have to learn is the different weights given a prescribed set of activation functions, a prescribed number of layers, prescribed width of the layers. We need to take all the training data that allows us to then do back propagation to train these neural network weights. Okay, But that's a generic representation. So I build a mapping. The flow map itself is just some neural network architecture. And this is exactly what I did last time, except for now, I have three different things I'm mapping into. The, I'm taking a big step into the future. That's my, that's my delta t. I'm taking a medium scale step and a small scale step. So three step decomposition. And I can just do this because I'm not constrained anymore with neural networks 
to having delta t be small. This is exactly what you had to do in scientific computing. Delta t had to be small to build a flow map using a numerical integrator. But now we can just say, learn a neural, map map, neural network mapping with delta t being fairly large. All right, we prescribe a loss function. Here it is. The loss function is going to just be the mean squared error. In fact, I showed this in the last lecture. That was exactly what we prescribed in training the neural network architecture. Here it is, the difference between my neural network approximation to the actual truth in the training data squared, and I want to minimize that. That's the loss function. So when you build these, uh, when you build that neural network mapping taking you from t to some t plus delta t, and over all these trajectories, you would like to minimize this quantity, which is the difference between these squared. All right, here is the architecture. There are four steps. If we do decomposition to three scales, you can do less scales. For instance, you can just do a fast slow, or you can do even more time scales in your system, fast, two medium scales, and a really slow. It depends on your architecture. It depends on your physics. If you know things about your physics and the kind of time scales, it will determine a little bit of what you do here. So the idea is the following. Every single one of these steps, so let's go ahead and look at the cyan line here. This is my big step. I'm going to learn that first. The idea is to take really big steps into the future, right? So that's my slow scale. So I'm going to start learning with a neural network, some representation, and that's going to be my delta t1. It's going to be a big step. Delta t1 is big. So that it's going to be, I learn how to walk very far into the future, and from each step very far into the future. Now I have the training data. If I have long trajectories of data, I can learn those big steps from my multiple trajectories and my various long runs of, of training data. Okay? So what I've learned here then is how to take big steps into the future. In other words, I want to walk a big step over, just like you're seeing here. right? This is what the cyan dots are. This is, I've learned how to step way into the future here. This is my delta t, another big step into the future. Notice how in two steps how far I can go into the future. That's the idea of this. Of course, this is a cartoon. So keep in mind that uh, this cartoon is just trying to represent how these different scales are playing out. Once you've learned that, you can come down to say, OK, now what I also want to learn is step two, how to learn an intermediate scale. So I can take, take off from any one of these points here and learn these medium scale steps. That's the blue. But then I can also say, well, the medium scale steps also means I take a big step into the future, and then I medium scale steps here. Or I can take two steps into the big into the future, learn medium scale scales there. So notice, I'm integrating in this medium scale already the very slow steps that I've learned. In other words, I don't train these medium scales separately. I train them in context of my very big time step, which is the, the cyan. So that's the idea. Is with that, I learned a second neural network with delta t2, which is smaller than delta t1, but also leverages the fact that we've learned how to make big steps into the future. So that's how I learned those. Finally, we learned the fast scale. Once we learn the slow scale, the medium scale, now we can learn just these orange steps, the small scale stuff. And by the way, I can learn this in many ways, right? I can say, also I can, here's my training loss too, which is I can take a big step into the future, a medium step, and then orange steps. That gets me, for instance, into this time point. So if I want to look at this time point, that means it's one cyan step, one blue step, and then two orange steps. That's how you learn how to do those kind of steppings into the future. So you're integrating into this fine scale stepping, in other words, the fastest scale resolution, the fact that you have learned a slow step, a medium step, and you can put that all together because if you want to walk far into the future, what you do is you take as many big steps as you can to just before you get there, and then you take medium and small steps once to, get to resolve that solution at that point into the future. So step four is you can just rearrange and interpolate everything in between. So now you just re rearrange. Notice the big step here. There they are. This is the, the cyan here, the cyan all the way over here. 
then the blue steps are interleaved, and then you have the orange steps, which are the finest scale. So this is the cartoon. You're learning all three stepping algorithms, in some sense, simultaneously, and they're leveraging each other to make a future state prediction. But notice, you have three different flow maps that are learned. Fast scale flow map, that's the orange. Medium scale flow maps, that's the blue. Slow flow map, which is the cyan. And by doing that, it allows you this great flexibility of, of, first of all, resolving the fast and slow and medium scale physics correctly, and allowing you to walk very efficiently far into the future to make predictions. So this is a very nice architecture. It uh, allows you to untether yourself from these approximations that we typically make in scientific computing, which says, uh, the approximation is good as delta t is, as long as delta t is small. Here, you've moved away from the Taylor series expansion concept, and so it allows you to make very accurate, uh, provided you have the training data, uh, very accurate predictions of future states by decomposing the solution in this way. By the way, the other interesting thing about this is you can, in fact, integrate in standard numerical time steppers. Here is an architecture. This is a hybrid architecture. We've just broken it down to two scales, a fast and a slow. So the slow scale is the cyan. There it is. The fast scale is the orange. So what I can do is I can learn a neural network for the, fast, for the slow scale. right? So I can learn this big mapping that takes me very big steps into the future, delta t1. Okay? But then, Last time what we did is once we learned that, then on the faster scales, we learned neural network architectures there. Here instead, you could say, I can learn this big mapping, but then when I get to the fast scale, I will use standard time-stepping algorithms. In fact, in many systems, you have a very good idea of what the fast scale physics might be, and you actually have a pretty good model for it. The problem with those is that if you have to resolve that and still go very far into the future, it will cost you a lot of computational effort. Here what you can do is say, I will take big steps in the future with this neural network, but then once I get to the fine scales, I can just simply run my Runge Kutta solver. Right? So if I want to walk, for instance, into this point in time right here, I either simulate everything on a very fast scale all the way till I get out there, or I take one big neural network step, which is the slow scale, and then now switch to my Runge Cutter solver, let's say, for only a short burst. You see how you're exploiting and taking advantage of a neural network that learns big steps, and then you can refine on and then just use this, your standard stepper if you feel more comfortable. So in other words, you don't have to just do all neural network training to learn the flow maps. You can integrate the flow maps with standard scientific computing tools. So this is a nice hybrid method, which allows you to exploit and take advantage of things that you feel, let's say, very comfortable with. If you feel like your fast scale physics is, you don't need a neural net stepper. Just use your OD45 or Runge Kutta stepper. It's very accurate. You can build that in and use it with these slow scale steppers. Okay? So that's that hybrid architecture. So you see the flexibility allow that's allowed you when you use these neural network architectures. You can really integrate them and make use of a lot of different tools at your disposal, and they're very flexible in that way. Uh, by the way, here is some of the results from these multi-scale time-stepping schemes. Uh, we actually show this in the paper, the archive paper that I showed you from Lou et al. Uh, we consider various equations. All of these have slow, fast scale, slow and fast scale physics phenomena. And so what we do is we build, in fact, these multitude of time stepping in neural network architectures for learning flow maps. And so what it allows us to do is to do a very accurate job in, in fact, predicting the time scale, uh, the, sort of the, uh, to do a futures forecast of these using a very nice, just, just by using these uh, flow maps to predict the future. Okay? And there's these different models. We can actually show the error analysis. And in fact, the error analysis, we can actually directly compare our neural, trained neural network architecture to uh, standard numerical algorithms and solving it with something like OD45. And you can find that, in fact, this multi-scale flow map that we've learned is 
is as accurate as any of the, f uh, of the time steppers. Uh, in fact, better so most of the time. And so you can get yourself better solutions and faster solutions because now your neural network flow map is, is actually just can walk you very far into the future and then you can refine as you go from there. Uh, and we also can compare it to other standard neural network architectures that just, f in fact, here they are. So we can say, here's some ground truth on some spatial temporal data. And what we want to do is say, if we learn these flow maps with this hierarchical time, time stepping methods, here's our results here. And you can see this agrees quite well with the ground truth versus if you train these using LSTMs, echo state networks, RNNs, th these just don't even really do a good job at all in representing uh, the dynamics that you would get. And part of the reason is, is that we have explicitly taken care of the multi-scale physics phenomena that are, in B, uh, that are part, of these, part of these data sets. So you can see, like, if you leverage things in a good way, and of course for us, we know that multi-scale physics, even if we do standard numerical computing, we know that the multi-scale aspects of the physics really challenges standard stepping schemes because you have to resolve the fast scale, but you're really interested often in the long scale, long time scale physics. Here, we just explicitly separate those and integrate them in a good way using these trained models. And you can see from the results here, it's quite remarkable. So you can really go after uh, sophisticated physics problems. And by the way, we do this in an equation-free manner. Right? We don't necessarily know the governing equations. What we have is just data. So as long as we have the data and a good representation of the data for us to learn these uh, flow map architectures and separate the different uh, physics at different scales, we get this remarkable, uh, uh, these remarkable results, which are, quite, which are quite nice. And they really suggest that this is a very nice pathway forward for understanding how to compute future state solutions of systems where multi-scale multi uh, multi physics occurs, but also even if we want to do long-term forecasting in efficient ways, we can learn these big stepping algorithms and not be constrained by Taylor series approximations. So that's kind of where I want to conclude. In this series of talks, we've talked about time stepping. We've introduced how to train a neural network, which the input is t, the output is some t plus delta t. We've talked about how you can actually take real data here that I just showed you and learn hierarchical time stepping so that you can learn fast scale physics, slow scale physics. And these neural network architectures are so, uh, adaptable and amenable to training in this way that provided you have the data, you can do a lot of really interesting things using the neural network architecture because it just allows you so much flexibility um, for, for trying to understand the dynamics and also building forecasting tools so that you can make future state predictions uh, for the system that are accurate.